So, in the time we have left, um, what I would like to do is kind of show you a little bit of uh, uh, the capabilities of digital technology into a large cases, okay. particularly for fully dangerous cases. And, and then we will um, uh, also uh, open the discussion to the, uh, uh, with the panel. So you see, uh, this is a, a, an image of a, a case that is being fully digitally planned. So you can see here, uh, bringing the prosthetic reconstruction uh, from the occlusal and the frontal view. Uh, something that is uh, also uh, being on the works in different groups is the possibility of incorporating the full virtual patient in where you can bring into that set of combi and CT, STL file, the face of the patient, and therefore have a virtual reconstruction of your patient where you can actually work on that. So may I ask you the question on that? Uh, where are we with this uh, uh, approach? Obviously, this is a paper that Tim and I published in 2014. Uh, where we try to merge all, th all these files, but I know that you guys are all working with that. So if you can comment on, on the future direction here. Yeah, we, s we started with this idea 2013 and performed this uh, case report 2015. Uh, uh, so I think at this time, it's the chance for the companies just to stick it together because Every time you use different files and you want to merge them, superimpose them, there's a chance for some failures. So we need one device and capturing all this information at one time. And I think there will be the next step. Um, the IDS has shown a lot of new things in this direction, and all of the companies work hard on this. I think this is the future and just in the next few Vince, years. Vincent, what do we need? I mean, what do we need? Uh, for us to give you a full uh, a set of uh, digital files for you to work in there. Because that for a dental technician would be like Heaven. a dream come true, having the patient in your desk, on your desk, at your disposal, but in a virtual way. I mean, if you, if you see it, the question raised on this perspective, to me, it's first of all what we want to give to the patients. And at the moment, we are very static. We are working with pictures that are like 2D, some of them are 3D. But we are missing really the, the reality. So we are missing the link that people can smile at themselves and, and really understand what the changes would be. So you see that augmented reality is one big tool that obviously in Pokemon to go and, and is already in, in our life, but it's just not there yet in dentistry. So to me, this is really what I'm looking for, to, to get rid of static pictures and move on to something that you know, can be uh, augmented in reality to our dental field. So if basically, if we get the 4D, the fourth dimension, this file to move like the patient move, maybe the uh, articulators will be history. Absolutely. All right. So I want to move to the uh, uh, next case. This is a case that we treated uh, long ago with uh, the Dr. Finel, who was one of residents in, uh, in, in Boston. As you can see, uh, we fully uh, uh, planned this uh, full arch case. We placed uh, we plan for eight implants with a uh, mini implant technique to support the guide. Uh, and I want to show you uh, quickly this case. Uh, this is what uh, is the result of the fabrication of that screw retain guide and also screw retain provisional, that paper that we wrote with Gary uh, describing this technique. Then the patient got the implants. The implant goes uh, uh, to heal while the patient is wearing this uh, uh, temporary prosthesis sitting on, on the mini implants. Then we move on, or I should say Gary moved on, uh, and uh, uh, plan all these uh, uh, abutments. You can see here uh, exactly what the design was described before, a titanium-based connection with a customized uh, emergence profile. Um, and you can see here the transition between uh, uh, the digital design into the uh, clinical uh, trial, Gary, how difficult was this to do? I mean, the, this, was, this was a very interesting case. It was one of the first cases we have done with this uh, technique, and I think it got really easy at the end because we were able to place with a very good reproducibility this uh, guided implant, and we decided by that time to do a, a semen return restoration, 
which was very good because we had a very nice, very good lab technician. But today, maybe I'm going a little bit more towards cretin restoration whenever I can for uh, re-intervention possibilities or any kind of chipping that we were talking about when it's not fully uh, full monolithic restoration. But I, I think this case went pretty, pretty good. So, and you see here now that we moved on and fabricated the prosthesis digitally. Uh, Vincent, would you do the same here with that amount of veneering here? I, probably uh, different, huh? Yes, probably different, but this is, uh, you know, the zirconia looks a little more opaque than what we have offered in these days. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, since we discussed, time flies so fast, the industry involves so fast, so maybe today you, you, you think different just by the options that we have. And then we move on, you see here uh, uh, the case uh, uh, final with a segmented uh, uh, approach. Uh, and this is something that I, I personally think that when you go into large reconstruction of zirconia, the advantages of segmenting zirconia is something that we don't discuss much, but it, for me, it makes a lot of sense clinically. Zirconia is a materi material that the moment you work it as a, as a full arch, as a big piece, it becomes extremely technically sensitive. The moment you start working on, on small segments, uh, it's a very friendly material. So I think this is a concept that uh, is, I would agree that uh, this will have to be done probably nowadays, screw retain. And well, I'm happy to report that in this particular case, we have a three year and five year follow up without any chipping, but again, this is just uh, <laughs> anecdotal. And um, I uh, also would like to uh, I give full credit to the, the whole team at the uh, um, Harvard School of Dental Medicine who work on this case. So I think we have about three minutes left. And what I would like to do in closing this uh, 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 corporate forum, I would like to ask the uh, three presenters of the day to give us your thought about something I think is very important. We, and I speak of my generations, and that relates to many of the people in the audience, we went to dental school and we trained in analog, analog technology, right? And then at a certain age in our career, we have to relearn, right? So as you mentioned, Tim, the youngsters, you give them a computer and they know exactly what to do. So in one minute each, what do you have to say in terms of your learning and the learning curve associated to digital technology, starting with Gary? Yeah, I, I think the learning curve is easier with digital technology, but to me, this, what, what gives a lot of benefits today is this workflow is getting more and more organized. I mean, we've been hearing about digital technology for years now, and I think today we arrive at a point where maybe the companies help to bring the link together and the puzzle, and we have a lot of possibilities, and sometimes we can have shortcuts, I would say clinical shortcuts, without compromising the... The, the quality, and I think this is what is uh, very interesting there, is that we can save time. We are starting to save also money because the, the technology are decreasing also in price. So just say uh, technology is helping the digital workflow to be more... To be more efficient, be more cost efficient, and techni to technically efficient as well. Vincent? I mean, the first problem that we had and faced was basically that the interfaces just wouldn't you know, properly work together. So this was in utilizing all these digital workflows, going in and out, as was described so beautifully, was really not so easy to go in and out, and this changed completely today. So today we understand that we can really work with different systems, we can have different dentists, and we work together as one lab, and we can use our system, and this is maybe my strongest message. All the systems available in these days, the, like the, the major players that are there, you really have to get into your software, you have to understand this software perfectly and, and to its end, and then you can take full advantage out of it. If, if you just superficially scratch on, on, on all the topics, um, you don't take the advantage out of the big investment that you, in, in some of the cases, still have to do. So go into it, discuss with your lab technicians that you have one nice workflow set up. This is the crucial step. Very well said. Tim, what was your learning curve? 
Yeah, for me it's the same. So now you have all the availability, the seamless workflows, but you have to be open for that. And as you mentioned, Elvin Toffler, I don't know if you heard about them, the bestseller writers, he stated already 1980, uh, the illiterate of the 21st century will be not who can read, the illiterate will be now who can learn, relearn, and forget about these things and relearn again. And so we have to be open our personal motivation to accept these new tools. It's not a question if it happens, it will happen, and we have to jump on the train right now. And one, I, uh, I, I would say that once you get into that, you don't want to go back. So I still say, though, that if you want to take a pickup impression, I haven't found a way of doing digitally, so you still need to do that. But hopefully, we don't need to do many of those. So I would like to close by thanking uh, uh, Strauman for sponsoring this corporate forum and all the support in the presentation in this, uh, 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 in the preparation of this presentation. Uh, Michael and Frank Hem, thank you very much for your uh, great uh, effort in, in, in supporting us. Um, I thank you all for the uh, uh, excellent work that you did, and thank you all very much for your kind attention.